The Better Together campaign enjoys a clear and sustained lead in the polls, but are there factors in play which could turn around public opinion between now and next year's independence referendum? In an article for The Scotsman, Henry McLeish warned his pro-union colleagues of a perfect storm brewing, which could see the Yes campaign emerge triumphant. Henry McLeish, you've written of a perfect storm that could sink the Better Together campaign. What do you mean? Well, I think it's obvious in any campaign there are some big issues and big events that people can see quite readily. But my fear is that there is brewing at Westminster Conservative Party headquarters in London a number of very significant issues that could coalesce quite soon and create some problems for those who want a no uh, verdict in, in next year's campaign. Amidst those, I think, are, are some obvious ones. I mean, first of all, the lurch to the right by the uh, government at Westminster, there's coalition in name only. That's a worry for Scots. I think the second point is that certainly England is now on the march and the rise of UKIP gives cause for concern. And one big other factor is the, the Labour Party in Scotland itself. Since 2006, it's failed to get to grips with devolution. It's failed to get to grips with a, a real assault on the SNP. And quite frankly, Scots are looking for an alternative now, not the day after the 18th of September next year. So all in all, I feel that some of those issues can play a big role in determining how Scots vote and, of course, as a consequence, how the uh, vote for the referendum will, uh, will fall out. But Better Together has been consistently ahead in the polls. What evidence do you have to, to, to suggest <coughs> that they might be overtaken? Well, I think they're at their high watermark, and there's no doubt in my mind, regardless of what uh, impact those issues have, that we'll see a narrowing of the vote. But for the Better Together campaign, you know, it's a kind of hollow theme in the sense that I think that the United Kingdom is becoming more divided, Britain's becoming more divided. And one of the things that really concerns Scots is that every day we have to listen to another fear, another scare, another threat. This week we won't get into the Commonwealth, we won't get into the European Union, we won't get into a currency union in the UK, we won't get into NATO. Scots are sick and tired of that. You know, I was joking with some people recently when they suggested if they voted for independence, all sorts of famine, uh, aliens uh, 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 and other things would befall them if they, if they did that. So this is a nonsense. We've got to treat the electorate as grown-ups. And quite frankly, the, yes cam the no campaign is currently not doing that. But the, the Better Together campaign, the no campaign, are saying we're asking legitimate questions. But they're also spreading a fear factor. If you vote... Uh, for independence, certain things will befall you. But there is something more significant as well. You need to have a vision of Scotland um, beyond the vote in the referendum. What kind of Scotland is it we're fighting for? What kind of Scotland are we talking about? Do we want to be more like Denmark than England? There's lots of big issues here that fall around this idea of having a vision. Um, you know, the soul of Scotland is at stake here, our destiny is at stake, and quite frankly, the no, no campaign is currently not matching the aspirations of Scots. But look, the better together campaign has got to respect Scotland. We need to be more concerned about the Scottishness element, the pride, the passion, the patriotism. But currently, the union vision is extraordinarily limited. A lot of people might just feel that, yes, Scotland could go alone, but at least the pride and passion will be translated into something positive. So how do you want to see better together uh, progress? You're, you're saying about a greater Scottish identity and, and more awareness of Scotland as a, as a nation. What do you want them to do? Well, I think that since 2006 and the defeat by the SNP, Labour in particular and unionist politics generally have failed to realise that nationality and identity are now important factors. You know, the, the old class differences, they're having less of an impact on how people vote. There's a younger generation coming through as well. So I want to see the, um, uh, the, the no campaign saying, look, we believe in Scotland, whether in the union or out of the union, there is a big future for this country. We want a vision. We want to look at what kind of Scotland we require. And quite frankly, if you start to talk about those issues, people will relate. And you cannot continue to be so relentlessly negative and expect people to warm to you. And by the way, John, what is really important here is this. You know, the 306 years existence of the union by itself is no mere guarantee that it should continue. And what Scots are looking for... You're sounding very negative about the, 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 yes, the no campaign at the moment. Might you be one of those people who might transfer to the yes campaign? It's my interest. I mean, I've been over 40 years in the Labour Party. And in Scotland, they've simply lost traction in post-devolution politics. The SNP have been wiping the floor with them in holiday elections in 2006. That can't go on. 
And for me, it's about the Labour Party being more distinctively and identifiably Scottish, and it's saying to Westminster, saying to the Labour Party in London, you've got to start to take Scotland seriously. Imagine a situation if there was independence, the number of MPs to Scotland but from Labour would disappear completely. They don't want that down there, but we've been complacent, we've got to turn round, see Scotland as it is, they want to know if there's an alternative to status quo unionism. Henry McLeish, thanks for joining us in Scotland tonight. Well, joining us now is the journalist and former Labour spin doctor Simon Peer and the SNP activist and blogger Natalie McGarry. Thanks for joining us tonight. Simon, what do you make of what you've heard from Henry McLeish there? Oh, I, I agreed with quite a lot of what Henry said there, but I will take issue with them. And somebody's got to knock this on the head about better together being negative, like pensioners across the country people worried about their mortgages, what happens with the currencies, all these sorts of questions. But what about the and stories, and he made the points there about, you know, Scotland wouldn't be able to join this, wouldn't well, be able to join Well, there's a that. Commonwealth General Secretary, uh, Kamala Sharma, Kamala Sharma, excuse me, who, who, who made this comment. So it's the EU, uh, Barros and the EU, NATO, etc. So they are making these comments. So the idea that uh, this is all totally invented by the evil, better together, project fear, as the SNP tagged it, put the spin on it. This is absolute nonsense. Now, the SNP want independence. They want us set to break away into a separate country. That's fair enough. But, and they have done a good bit of spin trying to put about this is just being negative, but they don't have the answers, and that but is the reality But it's Henry McLeish, it's here. a former Labour First Minister who's saying it's negative. It's not the SNP that are saying it. Oh, no, no, but it's just caught on. But I disagree with him. I think he's wrong there. And he got a bit hysterical. He actually sounded like a cyber gnat in that paragraph. <laughs> when he, the, the, when he, Natalie, you could have written that paragraph for him. Could you, Natalie? Are you pleased by what you heard? Well, you know, I wouldn't describe myself as a cyber gnat for a start, but yeah. thank you for that, Simon. I mean, I think Simon uh, is... Uh, focused too much on the SNP. Clearly, Henry was not talking about the SNP. This is an issue that he's identified with both Better Together and the Labour Party. And I think the, the two things go together, but there are separate and distinct issues. Um, one about the, the Labour Party in Scotland and the Labour Party in the UK. What does it stand for? What is it saying? It doesn't have any vision at the moment. In Scotland, it's very much struggled to come back uh, since 2011. Um, Joanne's been largely absent for a while. You know, So there's nobody really... Joanne Lamont, uh, the Scottish Joanne Labour Labour has been, I agree with and, Natalie and so, you know, we've not we've not really got a rhetoric. The, there's kind of opposition for opposition's sake. And at Westminster, you see the Labour Party, there's there's barely a cigarette paper between them and the Tories. So obviously Henry's not talking about that, but, you know, they've kind of signed up to Tory spending plans on welfare. So there are the issues with the Labour Party in terms of what their vision is. They've not had a debate about what their position on independence is. And I think that would have been an interesting debate and it would have been a, a, an honest debate for the Labour Party to have because they're not an avowedly unionist organisation and I think there are people in the Labour Party that are uncomfortable um, with how they've been aligned with the Conservatives in Better Together. But Better Together um, has a problem because they could be a vehicle to offer some of the, the, the answers to the questions that Simon has gone on about. But the, the Conservative government and the Labour Party won't put pressure um, okay. to, to answer some of these questions. So if, if they were wanting an honest, positive debate, then, the, the, if, for example, on Europe... Uh, the UK government could ask Europe for their advice on that and put that to bed finally, but they refused to pre-negotiate. Well, OK, on, on, on the point particularly that what Henry McLeish made and, and Natalie picked up on there, what, what is the, the, the vision for Scotland and the UK that can be offered by, by Scottish no, I, I have my own personal views, but last week on television I said that Joanne Lamont and Ed Miliband, they'd been remiss, they'd let the Labour movement down by not stepping forward. Joanna's had an easier time than her predecessors, uh, Ian Gray and Wendy Alexander, because the media have been focusing on the SNP and been chipping away, because the SNP but, are but, feeling but, to but, it. But what about this idea of a vision? That, that's but, what uh, Henry McLeish is saying isn't there. Well, there's obviously people have different views on that, but Labour has got to come forward at some time and say how they see Scotland post the referendum, because the electorate deserves to know that what Labour's intentions are. And do you think and Labour will guarantee more powers post uh, post referendum? Well, it's 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 not up for me to say that. You know, I might have my personal views yeah, on that. But, but do, it's do up you get a Labour sense of it? You, you know the well, party. Well, they already. Do you get a sense I, of it? I think. Well, they already. We saw the Calman Commission. Now, the Calman Commission income tax will be going to the the Scottish finance minister. He will get a lump sum out of that. So there are these incremental developments that have been coming forward. Uh, it'll be interesting 
to see Joanne Lamont set up her devolution commission to look into that. Yeah. His vision for what let me, let me just ask like. one other thing then, and it's another point that uh, uh, Henry McLeish made briefly, if you can answer this, if you will. He seemed to indicate that Labour should leave better together because it was toxic to be involved with, with the, the, the coalition government. Would you agree with that? Yes, I, I do, basically. I think Labour can make its uh, argument. Labour's got to get a sack together and okay. see what we stand for, not just in Scotland, but right across Britain. And, and could that be uh, uh, Henry McLeish? And Nate Silver spoke about a game changer. So Henry McLeish said it was a series of things that may happen. What do you think the game changer or the series of things might be? And regrettably, I have to ask you yeah. a fairly brief. Um, I, I don't actually think that, that Nate Silver maybe has the, the best grip on, uh, on what's happening in Scotland. I, I accept But a series next, of game changers then? Yeah, has, I, I, I mean, I think, I think what we're seeing uh, in the, the, the pro-independence movement is very much a grassroots movement. And I think that that's going to start to take traction. I mean, for example, if you look at the events that, that are on the Yes and the No websites mm. at the moment, there are 106 events organised within the next few months on the yes side compared to six on the no side. Okay. And I think, you know, you're really seeing attraction. I think once people start to engage with the debate, they're going to want they're going to well they're going to want to see a vision about what they're voting for if they vote no. And I think okay. they've been spectacularly bad at articulating what it means to people. Natalie on that point, Simon, no thanks very much indeed for joining us.